City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at Consolidated.com. Hello and welcome to City Spotlight. We continue to look at the things affecting our communities, from Marshall to Taylorville and Arthur to Effingham. We are wrapping up Season 3 here on City Spotlight, and we're going to take a look at Parts 1 and 2 of Effingham in Focus. In Part 1 of this show on Effingham, Effingham Mayor Jeff Blumker, Craig Nielsen of the Effingham Regional Growth Alliance, Kent Probst of the Effingham CEO class, and Mike Wente of the Construction Trades class discuss new and current businesses in Effingham, plus what the CEO and Construction Trades classes are doing to help young people in Effingham and Effingham County in developing interests and skills in different areas of work. Thank you for tuning in to City Spotlight, and now, part one of Effingham in Focus. Jeff, last time we had you on in the fall, uh, you're about a week or two away from announcing a big box retailer that was coming to Effingham, and as we know, it's uh, Meyer. so where is that going? That's right, That's uh, that we were fi we teased you with that for about a year, <laughs> Ramin, and I apologize about that, but we, yeah, we were finally able to announce that uh, here just a few months ago, and very excited to have a high-profile brand like Meyer, a retail brand like Meyer coming to uh, coming to Effingham. Uh, you know, Effingham continues to evolve as a, as a retail and restaurant and entertainment uh, hub, and uh, uh, to, to have a store like Meyer uh, choose Effingham is just a, a real blessing for us, and, and they'll probably, uh, uh, they're they're still tying up some of the details, but they'll probably break ground on that sometime next year. Uh, you know, the store will be open maybe uh, 2000. It's a big store, big complex. It'll be open about 2019, somewhere in there, I suspect. And for those folks that may not remember or know, where, where will the Meyer be located? It's it'll be just north of uh, our our Walmart complex, right off Keller Drive. We've got our busy Keller Drive. Uh, uh, avenue there that uh, uh, attracts a lot of uh, that type of attention and so it'll it'll just be a little bit north of Walmart there. Okay, just maybe get a little bit busier. Yeah, <laughs> it will be. <laughs> All right, on the opposite end of town we have uh, the John Boo's wood plant on South Route 45. Uh, talked about last time you were on. Uh, how's that going? Very, very well. I, I, uh, I took a tour of their uh, uh, their progress uh, a few weeks ago, and they're just uh, John Boos is our is our oldest uh, manufacturer um, in in Effingham. I've been around for a long, long time, and uh, they they finally decided to pick up their their wood plant. They do they do stainless steel manufacturing as well. Uh, they 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 do a lot of the kitchens in some of the stadiums around the country, but uh, they they decided to pick up their old wood plant and, and move it south, and it's going to be just uh, just a high-tech, high-end uh, wood manufacturing operation that we're going to be very proud of. Uh, they're making a big investment in, in technology, and so it's, it's going to be exciting. All right, very good. Good, good to hear about that for a long-standing business in Effingham. From existing businesses in Effingham, are, are there going to be any new uh, possible uh, restaurants or anything in the future going to, coming to Effingham? We do. You know, again, we've it's we've got a lot of. Uh, you, you start uh, last fall. We we uh, had uh, had the uh, Chipotle. That we, we uh, were able to to uh, to open up and and uh, you know you get you, you start to see those high profile brands are like dominoes once one falls well then you start to see others fall and so uh, it, we just learned that we're going to have a Panera Bread there uh, on, along Keller Drive and that's I think that makes a lot of a lot of people happy a lot of, a lot of the younger people a lot of females enjoy the Panera Bread brand uh, we've also recently learned that Chili's is going to move in to uh, the old uh, uh, Ruby Tuesdays building, which is over by uh, over by Walmart as well. They're on Avenue of Mid-America. So those are, you, you get a Chipotle's, a Panera bread, uh, you know, a Chili's. Uh, we, we think that'll help bring people to Effingham and they'll, they'll, they'll be able to eat and, and enjoy some, some other entertainment there in Effingham. And so it's, uh, and plus the, the retail shopping. That's uh, a lot of reasons to come to Effingham and, and, and see us. That's right, so some names coming to Effingham. Um, last uh, May, we talked with you uh, and the police and fire chief at the time uh, about a, a new police station uh, that was needed uh, for Effingham. And, uh, um Talk about where, where the process for that is going. Okay, They've, we've had a team of people working on that for a year now, very hard, and it's a, they're, they're, they're wanting it to be a, a world-class <coughs> uh, facility, but at the same time, uh, being very conscientious of the budget. Uh, it's gonna come in somewhere around eight and a half, nine million dollars. 
Uh, it's going to go out to bid here in just a few weeks, um, and so they'll they'll uh, we, we've uh, just in the past month we've moved the police department into City Hall. They even kicked the mayor out of his office. I had to move downstairs <laughs> in, in the council chambers in the smaller office, and so but we're all making uh, sacrifices. But uh, it's working out quite well. We're going to put our 911 uh, um, uh, uh, complex in the in the basement of City Hall, and, and then they'll just tear down the existing the old uh, police department and start construction this summer. Very very excited about that. Working very hard to make sure that architecturally it, it fits the, the existing city hall. All right, very good. Look forward to seeing uh, the finished product for that, obviously. Uh, speaking of city hall, uh, Effingham recently participated in City Hall Madness. Yeah. What, what was that yeah. all about? Well, you know what? That kind of came out of left field. It's, it's, uh, we found out that we were in the running. It wasn't really, I think, um, it maybe somebody in our economic development uh, de department sent off a, a nomination, didn't think much about it, and all of a sudden, here we are. We're in this national competition uh, for, uh, for uh, best looking City Hall. And uh, we went through three or four. I don't know, maybe five rounds uh, with this thing, and the community really got behind it. I mean, it was really fascinating. They made sure people got out and voted and so forth, and uh, I, we ended up, we went all the way to uh, the semifinals, and we got beat by Peoria, Illinois. Of all, they put a couple of Illinois uh, city <laughs> halls against each other, and Peoria's got a nice one, uh, but, but uh, we were very proud of, proud of, uh, you know, the, the, the clearly the recognition of our, our, our aesthetically pleasing city hall that we have there in Effingham, but it was really neat to see the Effingham community get, uh, get behind that. All right, sound, sound like a lot of fun. It was. All right, very good. Uh, we sit here the first Monday in April, and uh, municipalities like Effingham have been uh, uh, taking care of their uh, budgets for the upcoming uh, fiscal year, and how has that process gone? We're in good shape with our budget. We have a balanced will. It, it, it should be passed at the, at the uh, next city council meeting, but uh, it's balanced. It takes care of all our debt obligations, and it's, uh, it's, it's increased a little bit because of the police station project. But it'll be about a $92 million budget, uh, full, full operating budget. But we're, we're pleased that it is balanced. We, we, all of our debt obligations are covered. And, and uh, uh, we, we, we continue to be able to make the investments in Effingham that, that we want to be able to make. Thank you, Jeff, at this time. Uh, we'll move over to uh, Craig Nielsen of the Effingham Regional Alliance. And Craig, uh, glad to have you here. And I uh, understand that you, you uh, kind of <coughs> a new guy to Effingham uh, since last fall. And uh, first of all, uh, tell us about yourself and how'd you end up in Effingham, Illinois? Sure, you bet. I, I um, arrived in Effingham in early September of last year. Uh, my background is 28 years of selling and leasing large industrial real estate in small to mid-sized communities. So I would bring a company into a community. I would help them negotiate an incentive package. I would help them understand the economics of being in certain locations versus other locations and ultimately put them in there and employ anywhere between 25 people to 500 people, depending on the community, depending on the building. Um, over the years, um, I would come into a community, do this, and then I would move on to the next community. And I got to the point in my career where I would, uh, I would rather be within a community, make a difference in the community, stay within that community, and see the growth that comes from bringing companies to, to those types of communities. I knew Effingham due to other business dealings and other developers and so forth. And then when I got a call from a uh, headhunter that was hired by the group that put the alliance together, um, I said this is the right thing for me and I'm very, very pleased with, with what I've seen thus far. What are one or two things that uh, made you want to come here that you liked about Effingham? Well, Effingham has a work ethic. You talk about the Midwest and you talk about work ethic and the, the attitudes. I mean, people in Effingham get up early in the morning. They're up, they're milking their cows, they're working the farm. They grow up, they work that, that ethic. That work ethic then translates to good workers in a factory. And it's hard to beat that for somebody looking for a manufacturing plant. I mean, when you talk about real estate and being located in, in a per certain location, 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 location was the mantra. I really think it's more people, people, people these days because if you can't find the right, right workforce, you're not going to be successful. Effingham has that, and so that's, that's one of the things. We also, have the we also have transportation network second to none. Interstates intersecting right there at Effingham and then three rail, rail uh, providers. So we offer anybody who's looking for a distribution, manufacturing, uh, high tech, we are, we're there to, to help. And the companies that have grown up there have gone from zero to hero, if you will, um, from you know, several tens of employees to hundreds of employees. And we wanna support that and help that grow. That's one of my main objectives is to help maintain that so that they aren't looking elsewhere, that we can also always meet their needs. 
It's pretty much a road going every direction out of Effingham. Absolutely. Uh, look at the map. Very good. So for those that don't know about the alliance, what is the Effingham Regional Alliance? You bet. Uh, it's the Effingham Regional Growth Alliance. Okay, sir. But um, what, what we do is, is we are the outreach for the city of Effingham and Effingham County. We want to put Effingham on the map. We want people to know where we are, that we're out looking for industry to come and be a part of us. Everything that, that Mayor Blumker just mentioned is a wonderful thing, and that, that area continues to grow. But what we want them to do is we want them to come and eat in our restaurants, we want them to stay in our hotels, and we want them to be there evaluated as a place for their business, a place to live. So we need, my job is to see how long, if we can keep those people that are stopping and enjoying what Mayor Blumker just mentioned, that they can stop and live in Effingham and enjoy being there a lot longer than just for a meal or a, a shopping spree. So I'm an out, uh, our, our organization is outreach to, to the world, telling site selectors, telling brokers, telling owners and companies that I've been familiar with over the years, come to Effingham, look at what we can offer, and then also maintaining the industry that's there, and then working <coughs> for, you know, finding a way that we can increase the Oh, 18 to 34 year olds within a community because and get more youth into the community. What do we have to do in Effingham to do that? We're, we're making some strides towards that. And we're going to talk about some of these things more in depth a little bit later on with our roundtable discussion, but uh, Jeff mentioned Myers coming to Effingham. Uh, why would a big box retailer want to come to Effingham? A big box retailer needs to come to Effingham because that's where the population is. You know, big box retailers or any retail company looks at traffic, foot traffic, uh, motor traffic, whatever, and when they see that traffic, they know they're going to be successful, and they know that they're going to be able to find a workforce that is going to make them successful. And we have the site, and we have the location, and we have the workforce to make Meyer successful in Effingham. Okay, and, and the overall landscape, and again, we'll talk about this a little bit more in detail later. Uh, just uh, how would you describe Effingham's uh, economic uh, landscape right now? Well, our landscape in Effingham is uh, we have an advantage based on the things that I just mentioned. Um, not to mention we do have some difficulties that we have to overcome. I mean, we have some, some um, things by statute that we have to overcome within the state of Illinois. But if anybody is going to look at relocating to Illinois or expanding in Illinois, and it's, and it's outside of the Chicagoland area, Effingham really is a shining star. It's an oasis in southern Illinois that um, really holds its own, and it's held its own for many, many years. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Craig, at this time. <coughs> Ken Probst of the Effingham CEO class. The CEO program is uh, popping up in many uh, communities throughout central Illinois. And before we get into Effingham's CEO mm -hmm. class, uh, tell us about yourself. How long have you been in Effingham? I've been a lifelong resident of Effingham County uh, all my life, except for a short stint going to college. Um, but I've been a teacher. Uh, this is 35 years, and I've been with the CEO program the last six. Very good. So you are a facilitator with the CEO program in Effingham. Uh, tell us about the program, and, and when did it get going in Effingham? CEO started as an idea when a young man who was a senior at one of our local schools went to visit a successful businessman and had a wonderful interview. And he went back to his teacher and said, you know, every kid ought to get to do what I just did. And hence the idea of CEO was born. And it took a while to figure out how that was all gonna work and it evolved and started as a class nine years ago. So we are just ending our ninth year and next year we'll be entering our 10th. And it's evolved from we need kids, we need kids to we have so many students now, we have two sections. And I have a wonderful partner in this and it's, it's a wonderful compliment. The construction trades class is phenomenal and it's two wonderful things that are offered for the youth of our county. What has impressed you most about the growth that it has made since the first year to now nearly 10 years later? What's impressed me the most, it's, it's the eyes of these young people that get opened because we can have the interstates, like Craig said, and we can have the rails, and we can have Myers coming, but we have to have the young people who wanna come back. And that's what I view myself and Christy, my partner in this. We view ourselves as the head cheerleader for the young people to convince them that FEM County is a cool place to go away to school, to find what they want to do and find out that Effingham is where they want to end up someday. Here on City Spotlight, we've learned that uh, several communities uh, have have the CEO class going or, or getting started. Christian County has the program going. Shelby and Douglas counties are going to get going. Shelby County, I understand, came in 
and visited you guys to, yes, sir. to uh, check out how you guys are doing so they can start up. Uh, if uh, those two newer counties, Shelby and Douglas County, if people in the viewing areas are, are watching this program, what should they be most excited about the CEO program coming to their communities? The transformation of the young <laughs> kids and how they take ownership and how they thoroughly respect now the community that they're from and the county that they're from. Because they go from, what does FEM have? To, I can't believe FEM has all these things. What, uh, what role does the uh, local businesses have uh, in the program? CEO is paid for by business investors. And they pledge $1,000 a year in a three-year commitment. And there are no expenses to the school. The facilitator salary, all the expenses of the, of the class are paid for through the business investors. And the most that they can give is 1000 And we have a governing board, which includes members of the business community and members of the education community that work very closely together. Uh, roughly how many businesses are involved with the CEO class in Effingham? We have just right at 100 business investors. Uh, what expectations do you have for these students that come into the program? Or, or what are the expectations of the students, either one? I think the expectation of the students, are they, they, want to, they, they deeply want to, to understand what it's like to be in the adult world. And uh, they get to interview, they get to hear from, they get to be a part, they have a business mentor. And they, they realize that the, the adult community really does support them. And, and I think the adult community finds out that these young people are truly talented, intelligent young individuals who are just looking for some guidance, looking for advice, looking for a reason to come back. What is the reaction, uh, and I'll ask this to Mike as well, what is the reaction when they walk into a, a professional business and, and see firsthand what's, what's going on there? Well, in August, when we start, they are very green, and they're, they're just, they, they need to be reminded that yes, you do walk up to someone and you shake their hand and you look them in the eye and you can have an intelligent conversation. And, and my group was, we were on a business visit to Vantage, a local business, and, and they greeted the, the staff there and they were interactive and they were inquisitive and they were just amazed at what that company does. So tell us a little bit about the class and what the structure of it is. Throughout the course of CEO, the kids will write three business plans. They will write a business plan on their class business. They'll write a one-page business plan on their individual business, and then they write a full business plan. So when we start the year, we work on a class business. And this past year, it was the CEO experience. It's a half-day business conference that we rented the FEM Performance Center, and we had about 850 people in attendance. We now are working towards their individual business they have to start a legitimate, far-profit business. We have the Keller Convention Center uh, rented for May 2nd, and they will put on a trade show that is of quality as much as any other trade show that anybody would go to. All right, very good. Uh, last question for you here, Kent. Uh, where does the program go entering its 10th year, the first decade of it? Where does the program go from here? We continue to refine what we do. What started out as an idea 10 years ago is now being refined. What we started out doing as a mentoring program was wonderful. It was fantastic those first couple years, but we learned how to make it better. And each year we look at all of the different things that we do, whether it's um, Banker Day or Shark Day, which is a version of Shark Tank off of TV, <laughs> uh, to the trade show, to the, to the class business, that how do we make it better? How do we make it appropriate for our county? Because the way Shelby County is going to mold it is going to fit the people of Shelby County and the businesses and the business climate. Douglas County the same way, Jasper County the same way. They're going to mold it so we continue to evolve it to, to match the business climate of Effingham County. One more qu question just popped in my head uh, for you, Kent. Uh, Effingham was uh, the first community, the uh, county, to uh, take on this program yes, sir. In, uh, in the state of Illinois. Uh, what does it mean for, for you guys at, at the Effingham CEO class to uh, have other communities coming to you looking for direction to get it started in their communities? We kind of joke sometimes that we're store number one, that when the area communities, whether they're in state or not, 
because we have programs now. We have a program in Colorado. We have programs in Indiana. We have programs in Minnesota. We have other states looking at modeling a program after ours that it's very flattering that they come to Effingham. It's good for Effingham to have that exposure. But once again, it's good for these kids. When, they, when, when visitors come from other communities, our kids have a little more pride. It's like, hey, we were the first ones. And that, that um, reinforces the pride that they have in where they're from. All right. Thank you so much for your comments, Kent. And Mike Wente, you're with the uh, Construction Trades class in Effingham. And uh, tell us about your program or your background, please. Uh, well, I'm from Effingham as well, as Kent, and uh, went to school there, uh, except for a short uh, stint at the uh, University of Illinois, four years. Uh, I'm pretty much there my entire life. Uh, after college, I came back and got involved in the construction business, and I've been, in some fashion, been involved in that for the last uh, 30 years. Right, and uh, the construction trade class in Effingham is in year two, so how did you get involved with it? Well, uh, we started out, uh, Mayor Blumker and two of the uh, councilmen at the time, I think probably three or four years ago, started this conversation and uh, he uh, told those guys to go get into the construction community and see what you can get started. And they, the two councilmen came out and, and approached contractors. And uh, we got interested in it and uh, we were making slow progress and, and uh, we were a year out, we thought, and I think it was probably about this time of the year, yeah, probably in April, um, all of a sudden Mayor Blumker got uh, uh, the rest of the council on board and they dropped $75,000 in our lap and said, here, start your program. Well, you know, we, we, we all were familiar with the uh, tremendous success the CEO had and so that really helped us. It, it got a lot of support for us early and then uh, the city of Effingham got on board and uh, funded us and we were still a year out. We thought we were have to go through fundraising and uh, on our own and uh, that really got us going and got us scrambling to, oh gosh, you know, here we are. We have to have a program going in August. So uh, it worked out well. Okay, so the construction trades class or CTEC as some of you guys have referenced. Uh, uh, CTEC is a, an acronym for construction trades education curriculum. And uh, tell us about the program. What is it? Well, we're, we're uh, Kent's market is a, a little bit different student. We're after, number one, uh, students who have an interest in the construction trades, construction technologies. Number two, we're after students who uh, are likely, uh, are not interested perhaps in going to college. And uh, we're trying to provide a um, career path for them. And uh, the important thing about this career path is uh, it's not going to be exported. Uh, these construction jobs are required locally. Uh, you know, we can't have a building built in Mexico or in China and then bring it back and erect it in, in Effingham County, uh, Coles County, anywhere. Uh, so that uh, we're after those. Uh, and, and another thing from the contractor, from, from my background, um, the uh, average construction worker is probably in his 50s. And these guys are dropping off, they're retiring. Uh, we need to replace these people. And there's really a big void uh, in, that, in that area, construction jobs. We, we just can't replace, we can't, as a, someone who's always trying to hire myself, we just can't find qualified people. So uh, what, what role do the local businesses in Effingham and Effingham County have in, in your class that you're affiliated with? Well, m much as uh, Kent had mentioned, we, uh, we have reached out to the construction community and other businesses as well, but primarily construction businesses. And um, it's surprising we've really had a tremendous uh, support from them and uh, financial, we have fundraisers, uh, we have uh, the larger companies have come on as sponsors and have committed for a three year uh, monetary commitment. So even though the, the, the city has funded us to get us started, uh, you know, we, we need to become self-sufficient. So we, we are, um, reaching out to our construction community and other businesses. We, uh, we're trying to double dip on, on some of yours. That's okay. <laughs> but, uh, and and they're, uh, they're interested, uh, they're responding to it very well, so it looks like we're gonna be in fine shape going forward um, okay. after, after the, you know, w with the city's seed money. In incidentally, the city gave us 75,000 for year one and 50 for year two. So um, we probably need to quit asking. We need to be on our own you know, uh, here soon. So uh, the, the interest in the community has been very good and, and they're offering tremendous support for us. Well, what expectations do you have for the students that are enrolled, uh, this being year two, what are the expectations? 
uh, what expectations I have of the students. Um, I expect them to go into the construction business uh, and stay in the community. And uh, that's, the, you know, that would be uh, our number one goal. And we have, we have students who are going into engineering programs, uh, four-year programs, architectural programs. They're coming. We have a few of those that want to see what the construction business is like. They, they have not had much experience. And, and uh, so we get them some exposure and, and you know, can relay that to them. Um, and of course, we're looking for people to stay in the community uh, to work, to, you know, to start down a career path and, and to provide jobs. All right, so tell us a little bit about the structure that you have in the class. Uh, what, what's a, day, uh, a week or a day like for them in the class? We have, um, we are really not teaching construction skills. We're, we're set up to ex expose students to uh, a wide variety of construction um, disciplines, let's say. And uh, I, per, uh, myself, I'm involved in the uh, plumbing and fire protection portion. I'll take two to three weeks out of the class. We have an electrical contractor that comes in and, and we'll take an electrical. We have HVAC, we have masonry, cement contractors, carpentry. Uh, everybody is pitching in. We, uh, we, um, our facilitator will get us all together and we try to put a, a systematic method and we, you know, in, in responding to what the weather situation is too. We, we put together a, a program. I may be in the middle of a plumbing session, three-week plumbing session, and uh, Effingham's a small community. We may have an opportunity to go see a, uh, a huge concrete pour, perhaps, in, in the, uh, Mayor Blumker mentioned the uh, Bose factory. We've been out there a lot uh, to see that, that facility as it's, as it's uh, being developed. And, you know, if, if, like I said, a concrete pour may come up, you know, I may get notified that um, we're going to skip my class tomorrow. The kid, the whole class are, are going out to see this uh, opportunity here or the erection of a pre-engineered steel building or, or something else. So e even though I've got may have plumbing, you know, we, 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 uh, we, we do other things. Um, probably half the time uh, the kids are out, the, the students are out uh, visiting job sites or uh, factories. Uh, of course, the job sites uh, are directly related to construction jobs or letting them see what's take what takes place. And I mentioned factories. We're also bringing them in to uh, some of our facilities in the area. Uh, th these skills, electrical, plumbing, HVAC, they're, they're not only needed for new construction, they're needed to maintain, you know, in, in a maintenance uh, uh, function in, in these factories that we have in the community. So we're trying to expose them to the whole gamut of uh, construction skills and, and trade skills. And, what, and my last question for you here at this time in the program, uh, where do you see the, the, the near future for the program going? That's a tough question because un unlike these guys that have had a, you know, coming up on a decade, I think, uh, this is our second year right now and we're trying to model our program as much as we can, while it's different, as much as we can after CEO. Uh, they're very good, they've been very cooperative and given us all kinds of advice, but uh, where do I see it going? Uh, I think we're in a pretty good place already, and um, I would like to see it expand. We, we have one class the, the, in our second year. We, we have one class. We had one class the first year. We had one class this year. Twenty students. Uh, this year we uh, this year we had about thirty to pick from. I hope to expand that, and I would hope to uh, get to where we have two classes uh, running simultaneously. City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at consolidated.com.